Hello everyone, it's Lindsay and today I'm back with another faith journaling process for you guys as we are continuing through the take four studies from Open Journey. Uh, I am going to be working through the kit number two. This is rest. Um, this is the kit that we're working on in the month of July. Now there is another kit already released this week, uh, take four seek. Uh, so I'll have both of those, you know, all the take four series listed down below. Stay tuned. There will be an unboxing of the newest kit coming out um, soon, but I wanted to finish up and focus on rest because we're working on that in the month of July. So I just want to, you know, no confusion. If you're like looking, you're like, mm, I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> Seek is for August. Rest is for July. So I'm a little late getting started with this one. I do want to do weekly videos for you guys, just like I did through the Word of God kit. Uh, I've already gone ahead and pre-done all of my notes for all five weeks, plus the word studies. So ugh, there's an ant. Okay, you guys, I already tried filming this yesterday. If you've been watching my Instagram stories, you know I've been battling ants for the last week. That's why I'm actually behind uh, on doing these videos for you guys. So I tried filming yesterday and I killed about 30 in the span of about 20 minutes. So I put out some more poison, let it work overnight, came in here this morning, didn't see a single ant, and now they're coming out now that I sat down. So bear with me, we are going to try to get through this. But anyways, I have already gone ahead and done all of the notes ahead of time. Um, if you haven't watched any of the Take 4 series yet, I would encourage you to. I'm doing something a little bit different with this series. Uh, Ingrid has done, you know, a shorter devotional for us. If you haven't seen the unboxings yet, I do have those on my channel. I have an entire Take 4 playlist that I put together for you guys. So you can find all the videos in one place, but she's doing shorter devotionals. And then there is a scripture for each week to just sit with, rest with, meditate on, study. Um, and so rest is kind of the focus of this entire Take Four series uh, and just slowing down, spending more time in God's word and spending more time with one individual scripture at a time. So since she's doing this format, I thought that I would help you guys by, um, offering up my notes that I have compiled. Now, none of these are my own thoughts. These are all things that I have compiled um, from a variety of resources, which I do have linked uh, on each one of these PDFs. So you can find this PDF linked in the description box down below. That is the only place to find it. That's the only place I'll share it. Um, so each take four video in the description box will have a link to the PDF that corresponds with that particular video. There is not a one-stop shop. Um, because this is other people's stuff, this is coming from gotquestions.org, Blue Alert Bible, my MacArthur Study Bible, um, all these different places. I, you know, it's not mine to just disperse out there. Uh, and so I'm trying to, you know, kind of just condense it to one place. So if you're looking sp for specific notes, go to that particular video and then the notes will be linked down below there. Um, and as you can see, I'm not doing anything pretty with my notes. I know that we can, you know, kind of go into the weeds and start doing, you know, crazy journals and binders and tags and all the things. And those are fun and I love doing those. Um, but there's nothing wrong with just plain, boring, three ring binder notes. <laughs> Let me tell you, I really enjoyed this. Of course, I had to do a little bit of prettying up. Um, I shared this in my stories. I used the uh, notepad from Open Journey. This are these like printed mixed media papers. And I used my We Are Makers tab punch and created tabs in here. And that's what I did. So I just printed out my notes, created tabs for the labels. I just put the verses. And this actually ended up being very helpful because during today's study that we were going to look at, it actually referenced a passage we had already studied, Hebrews 4, 12 through 13. And so I was able to easily flip back to that and find it because I had those tabs. Now I have ordered mine in the order that they appear in my devotional books, um, you know, for each week, that's the order I put it in. As this fills up, I may go back and do it in like book order. Um, you know, so Psalms, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, do it in that order. So it'd be a little bit easier to reference to, but you know, I don't know, you do you figure out what works for you, but this is what I'm doing. So these notes for today will be found in the description box down below, as well as links to everything that we are using, talking about all the good things, um, for this video. So let's dive right in and start talking about today. So we are kicking off, uh, with week one, I'm going to try to catch up and do a double video this week. So we're all cut up. Um, on the appropriate week. But for today is Matthew 11, 28 through 29. 
time. Uh, I am using the NASB 95 version. That's the version I study from. I know I've gotten lots of questions um, about translations. That's just the one that I'm currently uh, kind of bouncing around in. So Matthew 11, 28 through 29 says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. So this is Jesus speaking here in Matthew, uh, and such a good, good scripture to study through. So I have gone ahead and compiled a few different things for you from gotquestions.org. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail about the study because I want you guys to do the study on your own. So I'm just going to kind of point out a few things, but some articles that I pulled together from Got Questions. What does it mean when Jesus says, my yoke is easy, easy my yoke is easy and my burden is light? I love this one because it's talking about old law versus new law. Uh, and you know, exactly what Jesus is addressing with the Pharisees here is that, you know, they were so caught up in, I think at some point it says in here, like 600, 600 different laws just around Sabbath. I may, I may be misquoting that. You'll have to read that in here, but, um, it, I mean, they just kept piling on all of these laws and just making it more and more and more complicated. And Jesus is like, no guys, <laughs> learn from me. My yoke is easy. I am gentle and humble in heart. You will find rest for your souls. Um, and so looking at, you know, the unfruitful work of the old Testament, you were never going to be, I shouldn't say unfruitful. There definitely was work done in the old Testament, but this, this striving for salvation doesn't work. Doesn't work. We can't do it on our own. And that's why Jesus needed to come and do the work for us. And so you're seeing that comparison, um, between the old law and, the grace that we receive um, through Jesus Christ. And so you'll get to see that in that article there. Um, and then what is the significance of Jesus saying, I will give you rest. So again, kind of continuing uh, on through that. I don't think there was anything that was like super, super jumped out that I want to point out to you guys, but really great if you're wanting to kind of dive deeper. Um, I love the devotional content that Ingrid has here for us. Um, she does have a little bit of historical teaching in here that I really love about um, the reclining at the table, the really, really interesting information that you can find in there. And so this just kind of goes further deeper into uh, kind of the historical context of this scripture. Um, moving on to my MacArthur Study Bible notes, there wasn't a ton of those. Um, I did highlight that phrase, uh, you will find rest. Of course, that is kind of the key theme, right? Uh, and he says, from the endless, fruitless effort to save oneself by the works of the law. This speaks of a permanent respite in the grace of God, which is apart from works. So that is true rest. When we are trying to live life the way that the world tells us to live life, there is no rest. <laughs> and um, that is something I have experienced. And that's why I'm really enjoying the summer of rest. Um, I don't know that it's been entirely restful, but it's been a change of pace. When I am in school and, and running the kids and doing the wife thing and doing the job thing and doing all that during the year, I am just striving and striving and striving and striving. I find that I'm spending less and less time in the word because I'm so busy with all these other things and my life just disintegrates. I mean, I am just constantly anxious and things are not going right. And I like, my heart is not in a good place and I just, I feel it. And during this summer, this has been a time of refreshment and rest. I've been able to spend more time in God's word. I mean, just looking at this binder, this is just two months worth of Bible study. And I mean, this just, this is just a visual representation of how much time I've spent just with this particular study. That's not the other devotionals that I'm working on, some books that I've purchased. Um, I'm reading through a really great book um, that my pastor has suggested. I mean, I just have a lot of other things and I have time to, to do that, to sit there and to, to just reconnect with God. And it has just been so, so refreshing for my soul. And so, um, I don't know. I just, I think this is, I think many of us are ready for a study on rest, right? I think, <laughs> I think if my DMS and emails and things are any indicator, we are all kind of done striving. Uh, I have some great notes from David Guzik, of course, going kind of further into historical, comparing um, the new law to the old law, really kind of digging into there for you guys. Uh, a couple of things I wanted to point out here from his notes uh, that I found just really eye-opening. So in 
that phrase there, my yoke upon, uh, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. I imagine many of us are familiar with that phrase from Jesus. My yoke is light, um, you know, that kind of thing. And in my brain, I just always kind of imagine, like I had a hard time with that visual imagery and I'm just like, yeah, but it's still a yoke. It's still hard. It's still, um, I don't know. I just, I kind of wrestled with this idea of it being a lighter yoke. Um, and so this kind of helped with this. It says when training a new animal, such as an ox to plow, ancient farmers often yoked it to an older, stronger, more experienced animal who bore the burden and guided the young animal through the learning process. And that is what we're doing. Jesus is that older, stronger, more experienced animal. And we are being put in the yoke with him not to equally carry, like he's doing the work and guiding us, teaching us. I, I just, this made such a connection for me because I follow so many different homesteading accounts on Instagram right now. And this is the time of year where all the dairy cows are having their babies. And it's just so funny watching all these accounts, having to train these baby calves, you know, trying to put a halter on them, trying to get them to lead to the barn and to stand for long periods of time. And they're just going wild, going crazy, escaping fences, jumping around, pulling at the lead, just being obnoxious. And that's kind of a little bit how we are, right? In our flesh, um, in our sinful nature, we are that obnoxious little cow that's really trying to rebel and do our own thing. And we need to be put into a position where an older, more experienced, stronger Jesus can guide us in the ways that we need to walk. And so this just was such a eye-opening picture for me. I loved that. And continuing on kind of talking about the yoke there, this is a quote from uh, France. The David Guzik notes in the Blue Letter Bible app oftentimes have uh, quotes from other Bible scholars and pastors and things like that over the years. And so I'm not entirely familiar with all of these. I've done a little bit of study into each one of them. And I will say I don't entirely agree with the theology of some of these. Um, I think Barclay is one of the ones I've talked about in a past video. Uh, he had some differing theology that I didn't agree with, but there's still things that I can find value in. Um, I'm just not going to be like, go listen to all his sermons because that's, that's not it. But this was interesting. It says, this isn't a call to a lazy or indulgent life. There is still a yoke to bear and burden to carry yet with and in Jesus, they are easy and light. Jesus's yoke is easy, not because it makes lighter demands, but because it represents entering into a disciple relationship. So there is still work. There is still work that we need to do. It's just a different kind of work. We're not working for the world. We're working for the kingdom and we're working for the kingdom and we're working for that kingdom. We have Jesus there helping us. We're working for the world. That's not what his, that's not what Jesus wants of us. Um, and so you're going to find that a much harder burden to carry because he's not, he's not helping us with that. Um, he's helping us with kingdom work. And so I just, I don't know about you, but that just kind of helped with that imagery uh, of the yoke. Uh, I have some cross references for both uh, verse 28 and verse 29, which offers a wealth of more study. If you're really wanting to kind of extend out this week and do more, you can kind of dive into those scriptures. I highlighted Jeremiah 616 because that's actually the verse that Jesus is referencing here or quoting back to them um, in verse 29. This is where he says, you will find rest for your souls. That is from Jeremiah 616. And this is Jeremiah talking to the people of Judah and the people of Judah have turned away from the Lord and they are being reprimanded for that at this time. And so Jeremiah is addressing these people. Um, I have a note here that says Judah rejected the wisdom of the old paths. So it says, um, this is what the Lord says, stand at the crossroads and look, ask for the ancient paths. Where is the good way? Then walk in it and you will find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk in it. Lord, may I never be someone who says, I will not walk in it. Um, these old pa ancient paths he's talking about, you know, of course, is the, the Ten Commandments, the, the old law, the, you know, this is in Old Testament. Jesus has not come yet. So we're, we're looking at it from that viewpoint. But they, they had strayed, you know, they're doing their own thing. They're worshiping their own gods, trying to, you know, make their own way. And, and God, through Jeremiah, is telling them, hey, that's not the good way. You're going to, it's more restful for your soul to get back on that ancient path and walk in it. But 
there is just this continuous cycle that we see, especially in the Old Testament. Uh, and I found this really interesting. I'm reading this book from Francine Rivers. Um, it's about Aaron. Um, and so it's looking at the story of Aaron and Moses as they are leading the Israelites out of Egypt. Now it is a fictional book, but it's um, she is pulled from the stories within the Bible and then she's drawn them into um, a fictional story. But it's been really interesting to kind of enter into that world. You know, we read in the Old Testament, this constant cycle of the Israelites where they you know, rebel against God, they start doing their own thing. And then there's a cycle of um, repentance, reconciliation, fear, and love of God. So, you know, they stray away, God has to reprimand them. There's this time of repentance. Usually it's, you know, sacrifices and altars being built to the Lord and, and worshiping and destroying idols to other gods and things like that. And then there's this period of reconciliation. Um, and then they start walking back in with the Lord. And we just continuously see the cycle uh, in the Old Testament. And I, I don't know about you, but it's in the New Testament too, because it's happening in all of us. I think we all go through these periods of this cycle of, you know, start to fall away, maybe not to the extremes of, you know, the Israelites. Um, I may not have a golden calf in my house, but has Instagram become that golden calf? Has my home become a golden calf? Has my, you know, there's various different things that we could be making idols in our lives today. Um, and so then there's this continuous cycle, right? Um, so I just think that's really interesting, making those connections between the Old Testament and the New Testament. And I wanted to point that out for you guys, that that is um, why that is highlighted. That's that verse that's being referenced in the passage that we're studying today. Continuing on, I have pulled together a few different, just quick word studies. We will be doing an in-depth word study into the word uh, rest for Matthew eleven twenty-eight. 28. I'm not quite sure what Wednesday that video is going to come out Um We'll see. It will be at some point in the next few weeks. We'll have that. But uh, I try to always include just a few different words if you want to do a, a quick word study. Uh, I did want to point out that there's actually two different words um, for the word rest being used here. So in verse 28, we're finding this one here. Um, this is more kind of what you're thinking of, of like uh, to give intermission from labor, uh, to, to stop, to have to be refreshed. The, um, this intermission from labor is kind of my my way of thinking about rest. Um, really interesting note here. It says in inscription. It is found on gravestones of Christians followed by the date of death. So you'll find this, you know, Greek word for rest written on gravestones of Christians. I thought that was really, really interesting. Um, but in verse 29, it's actually a different word for the word rest. You'll see G, yeah, so G373 and then G372. So very, very close, but this is just kind of different. This is more um, referencing Sabbath rest. Christ rest, resting in Christ. Um, Christ rest is not a rest from work, but in work, not the rest of inactivity, but of the harmonious working of all the faculties and affections of will, heart, imagination, and conscience, because each has found in God the ideal sphere for its satisfaction and development. Uh, so resting in Christ, not resting in the world, right? We're seeing two different things. So there's two different word studies you can do. A uh, word study for yoke, gentle, humble, souls. Now souls is the one, yes, that references back to a previous study. So you may remember back in Hebrews 4.12, uh, as far as the division of soul and spirit. So we talked a little bit about that in this video. You can find that video in my, pay, in my playlist. I think we actually may have even done word studies um, on soul and spirit. Maybe not. Uh -huh. Yes, we did. There was two separate for soul and spirit. So this goes in for the word souls. There's a little bit more information here um, kind of about that and referencing back to Hebrews 4.12. So I love being able to see that connection between past studies that we've just recently done in the last um, month or so. So those are the word studies you can take a look at. And then, of course, those resources down there if you want to go to those websites. Um, these are hyperlinks. So you um, through the PDF, you can directly go to those websites. And then anywhere that you see bold, dark, purple. So not this bold purple, but this bold, dark purple. Those are hyperlinks as well. So oftentimes there'll be hyperlinks to that verse. If you want to just click on it and be able to read that verse really quickly. Um, back here in the... Uh, or the got questions notes. And um, sometimes these are links, hyperlinks to other articles within gotquestions.org as well. So they're not always just the verse, sometimes they're articles as well. So there's even more within that PDF if you want to know, um, kind of navigate that. And again, that's linked down below for you guys. So we're going to dive in and do a little bit of faith journaling for Matthew 11, 28 through 29. Uh, so things have just been looking different. This, you know, 
I know some of us do this study within our journaling Bibles, but I'm kind of enjoying having it separated, having, you know, my note taking and studying being in the binder and in, you know, with my uh, study Bible. And then I come into my mixed media journal to do my art reflection and do a little bit of prayer journaling. Now, I do acknowledge there's plenty of room in here that you could do what I'm doing in here in this book. I just was a little nervous about creating in here. I wanted um, a space where I could really go crazy and not worry about products bleeding through or messing things up or, you know, whatever. So because of just life and I just needed some things to be easy, I decided to create in this mixed media journal. Uh, and it's been really, really nice. I've been able to play around with different products, play around with different color schemes, um, go a little crazy, be a little braver in the artistic aspect of it and not really worry because it's not in something, you know, if I have to rip out a page, it's not the end of the world. If I have to cover it up with something, not the end of the world. I mean, I, I usually genuinely have that feeling about my journaling Bibles, but I mean, I really can just be wild and not be anxious at all when I am creating in this journal. So if you're, if that's something that you're kind of getting hung up on, if you are, you know, struggling with worrying about perfection within your journaling Bible, you know, maybe something like this is great to create in. Or if you're even kind of nervous about that, you you know, you're a perfectionist like I am, maybe just pick up an inexpensive, inexpensive little journal. It can even just be a notebook. If you prep your pages, you know, strategically, you can just work in a regular notebook as well. This is nice because it's mixed media paper, but um, it just really gives you the opportunity to play and explore um, and just kind of have that freedom. So that is what I am creating in, and I've already gone ahead and pulled together a few different items. It's actually going to be a pretty simple uh, layout. I didn't want to do anything too crazy since I'm going to try to cram in a second video here pretty quickly, but I did want to point out a couple things here. Uh, I pulled out one of the blank Polaroids. So these were Polaroids that were done through the beautiful series on Open Journey. I know that she's still got some in the shop. Um, and so each pack of these Polaroids had blank Polaroid cards in there as well. So I'm actually gonna use one of the clear stickers from this month's kit. I'm gonna make my own custom Polaroid with those. So um, you may have seen my What's in My Cart video. I just released that yesterday, if this video goes up on time, um, kind of showing how I store everything. And it made it really easy to just pull this out and be able to do that. I do also wanna point out, you know, we've spent a lot of time talking about the yoke. There's a lot of study on the yoke um, for today's passage. And so there is some yoke imagery if you want to grab that. Um, it's from the Homebound kit. Now, this kit is several years old. I went through my stash yesterday. It was so nostalgic and fun. I enjoyed it going through all of my Open Journey goodies, trying to find where I, I knew that there was a yoke somewhere. I just couldn't remember. Debbie Swim came in. Let me know. I think uh, Ingrid also, I had to ask, I was like, where where did that come from? <laughs> so they reminded me, this is the Homebound kit. I did have an unboxing for this for years ago. So I'm not sure if there's still physical kits in the shop. There are digital kits still. And so that is where this image came from. I have mine on clear sticker paper. Um, there was also a set of verse cards, beautiful verse cards that have this verse with the yoke imagery on it. I'm pretty sure that I gave my set away during the giveaway for this um, unboxing video that I did. I have turned my office upside down and I cannot find them. So I'm pretty sure that I gifted them away. So if you have those verse cards, um, they do have a card in there with the yoke imagery. So you may want to pull that out and use it if you haven't used it yet. And uh, just have a couple other pieces from this month's kit, some of the stickers, die cuts. Um, I also wanted to point out, I pulled out this older stamp set. Uh, it says, come with me. I'm going to alter it so, it so it says, come to me. So just trying to kind of utilize some of the things from my stash. We're going to play around with some Neo Color 2 crayons. Uh, I've really been enjoying trying to give some focus to mediums and not so much about, you know, the stickers and paper and all that goodness. I'm wanting to really branch out and kind of get a better feel for the different mediums that I have and get more comfortable with them. And I've seen some videos on Instagram, a couple people that I follow have been using their Neo Color 2 crayons. And I love, um, they're not Bible journalers, they're just regular art, you know, regular artists. They're just, they are artists, not Bible journalers. Um, and seeing them create with the Neo Colors makes me realize I really need to play with them some more. And so I'm gonna try with a pipette. We're gonna try something in here. So we'll see if it works. Um, just a few other things that I have pulled out. Things will be linked down below, but Let's go ahead. Let's put you guys on fast forward and let's put together this entry for, uh, what are we in? Matthew 11, right? 11, 28 through 29. 
All right, so we're gonna start with the Neo Color 2s. And you guys, this was such a fun technique and this is 100% safe for in your Bible. You can absolutely do this technique in your Bible. So I'm picking out a pink Neo Color. You can find the colors over in my What's in My Cart video. I have them over there. I just scribbled some on a stamp block, added a little bit of water, and then I have a large flat brush. I'm picking up some of that paint and I'm really working it into the bristles so it's like all the way up in the bristles, not just like on the tip of the brush. I don't want it super, super sopping wet. And then I'm taking this linked circles stencil from Tim Holtz and I'm holding it down on the paper and then I'm brushing the paint over the stencil and I'm trying to go, you know, up and down. I'm not going in like circles and I'm not working it really hard and it's not super wet. Like I'm just, you got to practice, <laughs> practice it to get it just wet, just perfect. It's not going to be perfect. Um, it's going to be mushy, but you just kind of have to play around with how much paint to have on there. And then because there's some paint sitting or Neo Color 2 crayon sitting on top of the stencil, I'm flipping it over and stamping that uh, ink right there onto the page. So I'm getting, uh, you know, two different textures with the stencil. Love it. Absolutely love how that came out. And then now... I'm taking a plastic pipette and I am picking up some of that paint and dropping it, splattering it. This was so much fun. I had so much fun with these splatters. You got these big, huge droplets. And then as the pipette empties out, it like sputters onto the page. So you get little splatters and wait till you see what happens with the purple. It's so awesome. So I am, I, usually I cut out my drying for you guys. So you don't have to watch it, but I wanted to show you how I'm doing this with these large splotches. So I'm, this has been sped up two and a half times. So I'm letting it dry for, you know, a few seconds, and then I'm sopping up the excess with a paper towel. And that gives you kind of that ghost imprint. Um, and so it's not so heavy colored. So this paint, I didn't have as much of it. And so I'm getting these big old bubbles coming out of the pipette. And this was awesome so awesome. They pop and like splatter the color over the page. I'm going to hold it up here in a second and slow it down so you can see what the details look like. This was so much fun. <laughs> I know there's techniques you can do with like dish soap and acrylic paints to get bubble splatters. Um, I may do that in a future video. Um, I kind of have plans for that, but this was like a happy accident and I, I loved it. Uh, same thing, dried it for a few seconds or so. I do want these to be a little bit darker. So you can see I'm just letting it dry while I kind of clean up my desk. Um, no like set amount of time, but you can see now because I let that dry a little bit longer before I picked up the excess, that color um, is a little bit more intense. And then here's a close up. You can see that stenciling and the stamping with the stenciling right there. And then the splatters. And then up here at the top, you can see where the bubble popped and left all that splatter. I love that background. It turned out so awesome. Definitely encourage you guys to try that. And like I said, it's safe to do on Bible paper. It won't bleed through. Those Neo Color 2 crayons are super awesome. So this is a large sticker from the rest kit. And I'm going to just apply the whole sticker to the page. So I use my deckle trimmer to kind of give it rough edges. It kind of fought me a little bit, but it gave it the grungy look <laughs> I was looking for. Now, when I stick down a really large sticker, here's my trick. I've positioned it where I want on the page, and then I'm going to reveal a corner of it, cut the backer away, stick that revealed sticky down, and now I have a hinge. So it's secured to the page, and that way I can make sure it stays exactly where I want it, um, and that it's, you know, even and straight and all those good things. I'll do the same thing with this sticker here. So I'm positioning it where I want it on this card. I'm gonna cut away a little bit of the backer and then I'm gonna stick that sticky down and then use that as a hinge to pull the rest of the backer sheet off. Um, that is my tried and true way of dealing with large stickers and getting them where I want and not having a bunch of fingernail prints. That's a hard thing with clear stickers I have found. I am Italian. I'm greasy. So <laughs> I get greasy fingerprints on everything. So I, that trick works for not having to really manhandle the sticker a bunch. Going in and just distressing the edges of that card, you can use the edge of your scissors. I have a Tonic Studios tool um, to distress the edges, but that helps kind of match up that card with the distressed edges of that come to me sticker on the right hand side. 
And then now I'm just kind of placing things. These are die cuts from the rest kit. With the digital kit, you get all those images and then you can print and cut them on whatever medium that you want. So that's kind of the nice thing about the digital. And I'm, like I said, just kind of doing a dry run, placing things where I want it. And then I am gonna go ahead and stick these die cut pieces uh, to the card. That way everything's all assembled because I'm gonna be doing some stamping, laying down on that other large sticker. Um, and so I'm kind of a perfectionist when it comes to my clustering and layering and collaging. Um, I want it where I want it. <laughs> so this is kind of how I do it. Um, just kind of stick everything onto that larger piece and then now I can get everything else positioned where I need it to be. Uh, doing the same trick with this yoke sticker. This is a clear sticker. It took me a minute to get the backer sheet off, but I've, I'm holding it in place where I want it, sticking down a little bit of it, and then pulling the rest of it away. And then now I know it's exactly where I want it. Pulling out, this is the rest stamp set that coordinates with this release. It's not a part of the kit. It is an add-on. You do have to purchase that separate. And I'm going to stamp this seal in some uh, antique linen, Distress Oxide ink. I'm trying to pull in a little bit more brown since there's the browns in that yoke sticker. I don't want it to be like the only brown on this layout. And then I chose a couple of the clear stickers from the rest kit to add in this top corner. I can still see the text through them because they're the clear stickers and that kind of helps pull that color over onto the right hand side as well. Now I was gonna stamp um, underneath here, but I changed my mind. I decided to use this washi tape. This is the Faith Words One or Faith Words washi tape. And I, I can save the part that I didn't use, but I pulled off this piece that says, he refreshes my soul. And that is exactly how I'm feeling this summer. He is absolutely refreshing my soul. It has been, it's been so sweet, you guys. It is exactly what I needed after months and months of just battle, let me tell you. Uh, I had this little love him piece that I had torn off of that washi as well. And I just thought that that was a fun little, little detail up in that corner, kind of finished off that cluster up there and pulled some of those browns over onto the right-hand side of the page. Not that that's important, but just kind of a design aesthetic thing that I like to do, balance out my colors. And then I can glue down that larger piece and I'm kind of making sure that there's a crease on that part that goes over the binding. I usually try to avoid the binding, but it works. It's okay. We got it done. Uh, I noticed I didn't put anywhere on here like the verse or anything like that. I really try, like I keep meaning to put the day or the verse or whatever on here and then it doesn't happen. That's multiple videos that this has happened. And I just kind of think of this as a prayer journal. It's okay if it doesn't, you know, totally match up and have a day number and all of that on there. I don't know. This is just a more informal little journal for me to work in, but I am going to need some room to pray. So I have one of these journaling cards from the rest kit. And then I have this stamp set from that add-on stamp. And I'm going to stamp it in some walnut stain distress oxide ink. Uh, and this is a little trick I have is test stamping, test stamp on a scrap piece of paper. Uh, see how different the color, I mean, I guess the color is the same color, but the intensity of the color between a first generation stamp and a second generation stamp. And so by testing that out, I figured out that I'd rather have the second generation stamp to tie in the browns. So I inked it up stamped once on that scrap paper and then stamped it on my card. And I love how that came out. And then if you watched my what's in my cart video, you saw I have a like bag of ribbon and it, it works. I was able to just grab that, rifle through all of those ribbons and found a color that worked with this layout and could snip off a little piece. So I had a little bit of texture on this card and could kind of tie it in more with this page. So if for any reason this card gets separated from this page, I now have elements that kind of match it up and tie it in with this layout so I'll know where it goes. And that is where I'm going to journal my prayer. And I do actually write the verse address on there also 
just so that I do have that documented somewhere. And then I can just paper clip that right onto the page. And that is going to be it. Super simple layout today, but I, I had a blast. I loved, loved every bit of this. So enjoyable. Uh, you can find all of the links to everything I use down below. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave those in the comments down below for me. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, if it's helpful, inspiring. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.